We've got tips and recipes for healthy living. So for fun and inspiration, come and join us in the raw food world. Welcome, everybody. This is Matt Monarch with the Raw Food World TV show. And we've got the beautiful, is it princess or queen now? Bala. Princess, Angela Stokes Monarch, and little Araya. Maybe we could see her little footsie. There's our little footie. Ooh, ooh, that's a little foot. She's feeding right now. She's feeding right now. Oh well, she doesn't want to show her foot. Okay, everybody. So, um, I've been going through postpartum elation. What? How does postpartum depression even exist? I am just elevated, elated, rocking the house here with my beautiful wife, and this incredible Oriah. So, um, there's a lot of things that we want to talk about today. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention is, as you know, Angela and I have a ridiculously crazy love and for each other as you've seen in all our videos you just can't deny the fact that we love each other and the crazy thing is since having this baby our connection i didn't think it was even po possible to love this woman more than i did and now it's just like some sort of demented love soul connection going on. It's just crazy. It's just like I look at her in her eyes, and we're just like, bum, 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 bum. What? No. It's crazy. So, um, Bubba, I know you're breastfeeding, but I thought maybe you can tell the nice audience over here. Um, you were saying that there was one thing that most people kept trying to tell us in all the comments. Um, it was like the big, if we had to put everything into one, like the, oh, yeah. yeah, maybe you can tell everybody what that was. Yeah, the main thing that people keep emphasizing is to enjoy every moment that we can because it goes so fast. Um, I can't tell you how many people wrote in saying that on comments or Facebook messages or emails or whatever. It's like the recurring theme over and over again. Enjoy every moment while you can because it goes so fast. I feel really blessed that we have the input of so many people because um, it gives us a kind of overview of what to pay attention to. So thank you. everyone. Yeah. And for me, like, all these people said this one thing, and I'm trying to, like, go with that, like, enjoy the moment and be with this child, and I am, don't get me wrong, but I love this child so much, like, you possibly cannot imagine, and I worry, like, crazy, this little two-week fragile little precious baby I'm like wanting to just get to the next stage, have her grow and just be past this stage of like, I'm so fragile. So I'm trying to enjoy the moment and be with this baby. And I am, I mean, but there's this pain inside of me that's just waiting to take it to the next level. And I'm probably going to experience this all my life. Probably all you are going to tell me, but just, I don't know. The first few weeks, this baby's how many days old? 16 today, I think. 16 days old. 16 days old. And, all right, last week we did a video, and for a few seconds there I mentioned um, the respect for women and just 
how amazed I am by all of you. And in that video, when I, I said these words, um, we got a huge response from that. And it, it's good, but it's also kind of upsetting to me because there are so many men out there that disrespect their women. In fact, there were probably three women after watching our video saying they're moving away from their husband or doing something. I mean, you saw one of those, right? It was like um, they realize that they don't need to be disrespected. And it's it, not only like did I get three people doing this, but we got tens and tens of email uh, from women just like so ecstatic about that. And it just shows me that there's such, there's a lot of men that disrespect their women out there. And it just, it pisses me off. I see um, more than ever, you mothers out there, I see like what you do and I see how deep your love goes for your child. <sighs> and it just drives me crazy. I mean, your love is so deep, in fact, it makes you like superhuman. All the things that Angela does, like, I'm extremely grateful for. And all you women out there, I'm extremely grateful for doing this to all the children that is going to be the next generation of humanity. And for all you men out there that disrespect your women, your existence makes me sick. The, the reason why you probably dis disrespect your women and the reason why you're so messed up is because probably your father disrespected your mother. You're probably on this like rampage of oh, I, I want to leave my wife so I can do my own thing or do whatever so I can change the world and raise consciousness. The way we raise consciousness is right here. This beautiful, these precious children. And the best way that I believe a man can raise the human consciousness is by supporting our woman and child as much as we possibly can. What? You had a baby two weeks ago and you're angry that your, won't, your wife won't have sex with you? Are you psychotic, you demented fool? Bye. I hear all these women speaking to me and I'm pissed off. All right. I wanted to talk about unassisted birth, but I don't know if I'm in the mood anymore. <laughs> you should have seen all the emails I got from women. Okay, let's do this. <clears throat> unassisted birth. Unassisted birth. Um, now, when Angela and I were going to have a baby... Way ahead of time, we knew that there was no way we were going to go in the hospital. It was just a decision we made. I know there's complications. People think in their heads and stuff like this. We're pretty healthy people, whatever. We just knew we weren't going to go into the hospital. We manifested that. Um, and the question is, babe, were we planning on doing an unassisted birth from day one? Or was it? were we even thinking? We're, we just never really made our minds up. And, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, regardless... Me and Angela are the most comfortable with each other. Anyone besides us is going to take it out to a whole new level. There's like, I told you, we've got this psycho, crazy, demented love going on. And even just like the slightest midwife that we don't know or we just met or even if we've known them for years, it would totally take, out of, take us out of our game. So um, this for us was huge. And mainstream messes our heads up so badly through movies, television, everyone, what we, we did this unassisted birth and everybody was like, oh my God, thank you for paving the way. It was like the most amazing thing in the world. Now, 
we used to stay away from mainstream, and it was no big deal to us. For example, um, a couple of our friends who used to live right next door to us, um, we were just hanging out one day, and he's ha they've had a couple children, and they were just telling me about their birth as if it was nothing. Like, oh yeah, I just pulled it out with my own hands. Like, I was just sitting right there, and then my wife afterwards just pooed all over the ground. It was kind of funny how we were talking about that. I won't mention any names. Don't worry, guys. But uh, it was just like easy. It's like, oh, there was the head, and the baby came out, and I had it, and I gave it to this woman, and then she pooed everywhere, and that was it. It was like nothing. I mean, I just just hearing this was like, okay, like, where's the fear? My, my horse just had two baby horses unassisted. Where's the complications there? So it wasn't anything to us. And then Angela, she was reading like crazy while she was pregnant, even months before we got pregnant. She was reading every book on the block about birthing and stuff like that. And um, we came across an unassisted birth book. And this book, we read it, and then there was no doubt in our minds we were doing it. It was actually because of this book, it took away, if there was any fear there, it took it away, gone. What this book is, is story after story after story of woman after woman telling their exact story of how they had an unassisted birth and how maybe their first birth, they were brought into the hospital and they were, because of fear, and they felt medically raped, and then they knew the next time they were going to have an unassisted birth, and then they did it successfully with no problems. Everything's just all fear-based. It's all so stupid. What have we been doing for all of our lives? So this book was transformational. It's, it was just like the cutting point. Like I read Dr. Norman Walker's book, Become Younger, and I went 100% raw the next day. This book was that I'm about to show you. We read it, and we went unassisted birth the next day. There was just no doubt about it. It was not even – it took – was, it was just nothing. So for any of you that have had a child or you are thinking about having a child – the number one book that I would recommend out of any other book out there is this one. We just got it on our website, Unassisted Childbirth by Laura Shanley. I actually was just talking to her. To her. She's the one who actually told me the term postpartum elation. So thank you, Laura. And um, this book... You got to get it. Unassisted Childbirth. It's just so blatantly obvious this is what we should be doing. I've got more to say. Uh, uh, okay, so this is how I look at it. I'm going to relate unassisted birth to raw foodism. Woo! Okay, so it's the same exact thing. Here we are, believe we're trained with television and mainstream media to eat standard American diet. Standard American diet. This is like this is like going to the hospital and getting medically raped and having a child. And then there's midwifery and whole foods diet. Those two are kind of equal. It's like we're brainwashed. And what we're really originally meant to do is just way too far out there for us. So we've got to kind of take like a middle path. Okay, we're going to have a midwife to actually help us do this process and we can do, actually do it ourselves. Or we're going to eat a whole foods diet but not like eat, you know, everything natural from the earth, raw, even if it's animal protein or not, whatever. Um, we're not going to do that because it's too extreme. It's like too much for us. We're going to detox like crazy. It's just like that. It's like a standard American diet equals going to the hospital. Whole foods diet equals doing a midwife birth. And then a raw food diet, or just the way we're meant to eat, eating less amount of food, is like doing an unassisted birth. Let's throw something else in the equation. Let's talk about mainstream school. Uh, no, this is going to be like a 10 million year video, but I'm just going to say it real quickly. We've got standard American diet, going to the hospital to get birth, and going to mainstream school. Those are all the three here. And then we've got Whole Foods Diet, Midwifery, and Homeschool with a bunch of other people. And then we've got Raw Food Diet, Unassisted Birth, No School. I'm probably going to get hit hard for that one. No School? Do I want my child to be an idiot? Is that what's going on here? It'll probably be the most smartest child in the world for no school. What If I didn't go to school... 
I would probably be doing much better than I am now. What more do you need than reading and writing and math? I don't want to get into this whole con this stuff, but I, my friend was telling me um, there was this 12-year-old who was making $5,000 a week just by going on the computer by himself and learning how all this marketing stuff works. And this one company could not pay people under 12 years, so they had to get rid of them. But this is what is the potential of these people. A 12-year-old was making 5000 a week just on their own. What I'm saying is we're, we're, tra we're taught to think of, of a lot. Okay. One last thing about this whole midwifery thing. And I think midwifery, just like a whole food site, is an excellent thing here. I was reading, we were reading this midwifery book and um, they were giving us statistics. I just have to say this, babe, I'm sorry. And they were saying, oh, if you use a doula or a midwifery in our industry here, um, then your chances of going to the hospital are this much less compared to this. And then it talks about if you don't use this and you try unassisted or whatever, you're more likely to go to the hospital. It was just more fear tactics and it was pissing me off. I'm not saying all midwifery is like this, but I'm just saying, just had to state that. Industries. And, um, I'd yes. Like to add something. Yes, please. I seem to recall in one of the books I was reading, it was saying that the average birth in, I think it was the US or maybe North America these days, cost something like $16,000. Our horse doesn't pay anything to give birth, you know? And people are probably watching this and thinking, yeah, but what about medical emergencies? And I don't want to assist on birth unassisted. And I'm not a horse, I'm a human. And la, 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 la. It's, you know, it's just a perspective. It's something to think about. The animals out there, they're not paying huge amounts of dollars to be given episiotomies and epidurals and vaccines and eye drops and yada 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 um, they're just out there and something that really uh, spoke to us as well was the fact that if somebody was with our horse when she was giving birth it would have made things so much harder for her. Complicated. She probably wouldn't have done it in an hour. Yeah. And the same goes for all all animals, all mammals. You know, we have that fight or flight response. A, a deer is an example that Elena Tanetti, Vlad Deerimova, often uses, the woman who did birth into being. <clears throat> if a deer is giving birth in nature and she gets um, startled then her anatomy is made to clamp down the uterus, close it down, so that um, she can get up and run, you know? Think about that in the context of a human. A human in a hospital context, for example, trying to give birth, surrounded by people who they don't know, bright lights, shiny objects that are about to be used on their body, monitors, all of those kind of things. It's just something to think about. 16 grand. Something like that. Do you, do you see what's going on here? All the drugs you take? Like, come on. This is it's such a joke. Okay. I don't know, babe. I love this child so much that she gets like this mucus like stuff in her eye and it closes it shut and I just sit there and I don't know what came over me but I just lick it out like just which is apparently what Chinese mothers traditionally do yeah she looked that up I just I couldn't help it I was like I can't let this child have that in its eye and I licked it up I would never think I would ever do something like that but I did yeah okay this video is getting quite long babe um, okay, so who do we got over here? Angela Stokes Monarch and Araya Berry Monarch. We gotta show them their little footsie! Uh, she doesn't wanna show them their foot! <laughs> oh, there it is! That's a foot! <laughs> That's a foot! <laughs> and Matt Monarch. And... 
ladies, you're where it's at. I've got your back. And we'll see you next time at the Raw Food World TV show. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again at the Raw Food World.